Welcome back to another Python tutorial. In today's video, we're going to continue with our Space Invader game that we're making with Pygame. In the last video, we set up the basic window for our Pygame. We set up a class for our ship object, and we also set up some movement for that ship so that it goes left and right. So let's go and take a look at what we had so far. So we had our window with our ship object, and this object can move left and right with the arrow keys. So let's go ahead and dive in and continue with our game. Okay, so where we're going to start with this video is we're going to start by making a class for our enemies or the aliens, and then we're going to work on drawing those on the screen. So we're going to do that under the ship class. And we're going to start by saying class. The name of this class will be enemy. Inside the parentheses, we're going to pass pygame dot sprite dot sprite with an uppercase s, just like we did for our first class. Next, also like our first class, we're going to define double underscore init, double underscore, and then pass self. Then we're going to say pygame dot sprite dot sprite dot double underscore init double underscore and self. Then we're going to be creating the image part. So we're going to say self dot image is going to be equal to pygame dot surface. And then inside here we'll define the dimensions of our surface and this one is going to be 25 by 25. Next we're going to fill that image with the color white. After that, we're going to define its rectangle region. So we're going to say self.rect is going to be equal to self.image.get underscore rect. So this takes the image right here and defines a rectangle region around it so that we can do collisions with it later on. Okay, and after that, we're going to work on drawing these objects on the screen. So the first thing we're going to do is actually define a list to put all these different enemies. So we're going to do that by saying enemy underscore list. And this is going to be equal to pygame dot sprite dot group. Okay, the reason we're doing this, we have a lot of enemies and it's going to be easier to keep track of them if they're inside of a list in one location. After that, we're going to be using a for loop to create all these different enemies. So down here, we're going to say for row in range and this is going to be between 1 and 6 and then we're going to be using another for loop we're going to say for column in range 1 through 11 we're going to be creating a new enemy each time it runs through this loop so we're going to say enemy is going to be equal to the class we're going to set its x and its y position. So we're going to say enemy.rect.x. This is going to be equal to 80 plus, and then parentheses, 50 times column. So here we're using the value column, which will be the numbers between 1 and 11. Basically what it is, 80 is the starting position for the first one. And then 50 is the space between each one. Next, we're going to do something very similar for the y position. So we're going to say enemy dot rect dot y is going to be equal to 25 plus and then 50 times row. After that, we're going to be adding it to the enemy list that we defined up here. And we're going to do that by saying enemy underscore list dot add and then that particular object. So really quick to go through what we just did here is we're using two for loops to create a grid of enemies. Each time it goes through the loop it's going to create a new enemy object from the class and then it's going to be setting its position based on whatever value the row and the column are at. And then after that after it creates the object it's going to add it to the enemy list so that we can do stuff with it later. And then what we're going to do to actually make these objects appear on the screen 
is under the redraw function, we're going to say enemy underscore list dot draw. Inside the parentheses, we're going to put the surface to draw these objects, which is the window. Okay, so let's go ahead and run our code and take a look. Okay, so now we have our ship and our grid of enemies. And if you want to, you can adjust these numbers here and here to either space out the objects more or bring them closer together. What we're going to do next is we're going to work on the bunkers. So to do that, let's go ahead and start by working on the bunker class. This is going to be down below the enemy class. And for this one, we're going to say class and then bunker. We're going to pass the same thing. So pygame.sprite.sprite. .sprite. We're going to define its init function. Then we're going to say pygame dot sprite dot sprite dot double underscore init double underscore and self. Next we'll define the image. So we'll say self dot image is going to be equal to pygame dot surface. This one is going to have the dimensions of eight by eight. We're going to fill this image with the color green. After that, we're going to create the rectangle part. So we're going to say self dot rect. It's going to be equal to self dot image dot get underscore rect. Okay, so that's all we need for the class itself. So it's very similar to the enemy class. The only thing we changed was the dimensions right here. Okay, next, let's go ahead and create a list for all these bunker items. To do that, we're going to say bunker underscore list. It's going to be equal to pygame dot sprite dot group. Okay, for the for loop itself, we're going to write this under the one we did for the enemies. And this one is actually going to contain three for loops. One of them is going to create the three different bunkers. And the other two are going to create the grid, just like we did for the enemies. So for the first one, we're going to say for bunk in range three. And then for row in range five. And then for column in range 10. What we're going to do is we're going to create a new bunker item. So bunker is going to be equal to the class. And then we're going to set its x and y position. So we're going to say bunker dot rect dot x is going to be equal to 50 plus 275 times bunk. And then we're going to add this to 10 times column. And once we're done with this, I'll go through and explain where these numbers are coming from. Next, we're going to say bunker dot rect dot y is going to be equal to 500 plus and then 10 times row. After that, we're going to add each bunker to the bunker list. So we're going to say bunker underscore list dot add and then bunker. So for our bunkers, we're creating this in the shape of a rectangle. But inside of the rectangle, there's a bunch of smaller little squares that compose this rectangle. And the reason for that is whenever the missiles hit this bunker, it'll destroy that small little square region of it rather than destroying the whole bunker. So what this first for loop is doing is we're creating three different bunkers. So that's why we have three right here. And then these two for loops right here are defining how those three large rectangles are being composed. So these are basically creating a grid of smaller little squares, just like we did for the enemy grid above. So every time it goes through this loop, it's going to be creating a small bunker piece that will be collected into a larger bunker. As far as the X position goes, what it's doing is saying start the first bunker at a position of 50. And then for each additional bunker, space it out 275 pixels. 
And then for each small little square region of the bunker, we're going to space it out 10 pixels. So remember each individual bunker piece has a dimension of 8 by 8. So by having a space of 10 in between each one, it's going to leave a little gap in between each piece. And then for the Y position, we're going to start each one at a position of 500. And then the spacing going up and down is 10 as well. So after it sets each small bunker piece, it's going to add it to the list so that they're easier to manage later on. Okay, so to have these objects drawn on the screen, let's go ahead and head down to the redraw function. And what we're going to say under the enemy list is we're going to say bunker list dot draw. And then we're drawing this on the window. Let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, so now we have our enemy grid up top and we have our three bunkers. And here it's easier to tell what I was talking about. So each bunker is a rectangle that's composed of smaller squares. And what's going to happen is every time a missile touches one of those small squares, it'll delete that part of the bunker. Okay, so I think we'll stop here for this video. In the next video, we'll finish up with the last two objects, which will be the missiles from the enemies and also the ship. And then we'll work on getting everything moving. This is going to be the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed and stay tuned for the next one. <laughs>